like Craig was saying, like you were drafted into that golden era of the NBA. We saw the popularity on the rise, you know, just a few years ago, we, we, we see, uh, you know, bird and magic get drafted. We see the three point line added popularity is just on like a huge rise in the NBA right now. You're drafted into all that as it's like at its peak, what, what's kind of going through your mind seeing like, like you said, you're playing along, you know, some of the greatest this game has ever seen. And, you know, you're also there at the turn of seeing that next generation coming with Kobe, Dirk, all those guys. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. That was, that was very difficult uh, to try to maintain your, I don't want to say insan- insanity, but um, to, you know, like when we went to the finals against Mike, when we, you know, uh, playing magic, uh, playing with magic, you know, that was one of the things that you, you, you had to really get a grasp on, like who you playing with and who you're playing against. Uh, you know, when we got, I, I can relate because when we got Charles, I mean, we were a decent team in Phoenix, KJ and Tom Chambers, they was nice, but we, we really couldn't gain the respect of the referees with, with Horner second Marley. We could not get over the hump, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to somebody to just go, you know what? I don't care what else is going on. I don't care it's raining outside. I don't care if somebody's knee is not hurting. I'm going ma- I'm to make sure we win this game. And that's what Charles brought to the table. And and we walked a little taller with our chest out a little bit more with him on our squad. And that's the difference between stars and freaking superstars, man. That they don't – there is no – I mean, I love the comparisons, man. And we can go on and compare Kobe, LeBron, and, and Mike all day. But let me, let me, give, me a, let me give you an example of, of Michael. Um, in the finals against us, uh, uh, I had the broke foot uh, the night before we hang out with Mike. At the time, Phoenix closed at 1 p.m. a.m. Excuse me. So we leave the club by 1:30. We go to Mike's place and playing cards, it's a party, cigars, drinking. He's doing his thing. You know, I leave with the broke foot at 3:34. They still going. He gets up and walks 18 holes of golf at 7 a.m. Walks 18 holes of golf at 7 a.m. Now, this is a finals game that is adjusted because it has to accommodate East Coast television, which East Coast television rules the world. So this game starts at 4 o'clock, Phoenix time. 7 a.m., you get up and walk. 18 holes, that's three, four hours. Okay, so noontime, <laughs> noontime, bus leaves at two. Bus leaves at two. And you give us 53? Mm. He, he didn't even up. sleep? He probably, that's what I was about to say. He didn't even fucking sleep. Jeez. But yet, but yet, uh, no disrespect, my man, Cove level. Cove eight, right? Right. Vanessa made sure he got his rest. <laughs> Cole he wasn't in no clubs. Cole wasn't doing, you know, he, you know, he Cole didn't drink. Cole yeah. didn't smoke. Cole didn't, you know, LeBron didn't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? LeBron didn't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? His mama made, you know, get your rest, get yeah. your acupuncture. Get your <laughs> so I'm Yeah, that's a different beast. Yeah, and we're talking, we're talking about fouls. We're talking about an era where you can foul, where you can foul. Yeah, slap. Can, you can hear that. I'm talking capitate. You know what I'm saying? In, in the finals, in the finals against the Lakers in Boston, when when Mikel took out Rambis, there was no technical. <laughs> there yeah. was no ejection to that. Like they got fined. $25. Come on, Come on man. <laughs> when Robert Parrish starts swinging on Bill Lambeer, there was not even a foul call. He gave Bill Lambeer five Damn. piece with a biscuit, and it wasn't <laughs> even a foul call? Like, come on, man. We talking that's a like, totally different era. That's like hockey right days. It's like that's basketball. like hockey. Yeah. That's like trying to play basketball on a hockey floor. Yes, you're exactly right. Good, good terminology. <laughs> yeah, man, that's crazy, yo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I but, but the athlete, boxes let, back let in the day. Give, let me give respect, respect to the dude. The, 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 the skills of the players today are much more than we had. Yeah. Better shooters, better ball handlers, uh, uh, physical, physicality, the physicalness. They bodies yeah. can take 
what we dished out back then because their bodies are unbelievable because all the training and all that stuff that they do with these things right here. You know what I'm saying? When you call somebody, they had to be home. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. And when and when and when they was on the phone, you got a busy signal. So, mm-hmm. being that you can get everything that you want at your fingertips now, meaning that the physicality and all that stuffness, if you merge the two, it would be different. Now, if Jordan era comes into this era, LeBron would kick his ass. Wow. But if LeBron would transform, knowing that the way he was raised and the technology, and boom. The same thing. He wouldn't know how to function with all the fouls, the touching, the pushing. It would take him a while to get used to that. Matter of fact, I, people ask me this comparison: LeBron James is Carl Malone in this in, in that era because his size and his strength. No coach would allow <laughs> LeBron to dribble the ball like they wouldn't allow Carl to Bad. get your big ass with your back to the basket and post up. But they said that the magic too, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you, 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 that's magic didn't come in as a point guard. Remember, Norm Nixon was the point guard. Yep. Yeah. Norm Nixon was the point guard. It takes it takes he was that like coaching the, he to was, go. But but also, magic was a point guard in high school. So LeBron, the, the difference between Carl Malone and LeBron, Carl was not a, a point guard in high school. So, so you you got to remember, and 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 then uh, Magic came into being a point guard at Michigan State too. So, you you got to understand at that time that was un, unheard of, and you had to be Magic to be that. You had to be Magic to be that. Look at Bird. Bird had the same skills, but he wasn't a point guard. He had the, he had Dennis Johnson. He had uh, he had uh, what's the number seven? Uh, I want to say Nate Robinson, but that's not his name. I can't believe I'm disrespecting this 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 legend right now. Tiny Archibald. Tiny. Uh, he had Tiny, he had Tiny Archibald, Hall of Famer. He had Tiny Archibald, he had Danny Ainge, he had point guards, but he had the same skills as Matt, but he just couldn't, you know, it's the it's the tech, it's the it's the technician of the coach. Would the coach allow you to do that? That's what I'm saying. If you move LeBron into Carl Malone's era, the coaches would make him play with his back to the basket. And that's how he would be raised. But LeBron coming up was like, yo, the ball is. Your ball is yours. You could do this. And and the reason why they say he could do that because they watch Magic do it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, you're 6'8". Oh, Magic, Magic can do it, so that means it's possible. Penny Hardaway did it, so that means it's possible. Grant Hill did it, that means it's possible. So all of those players birthed LeBron James. So I, I can't wait to see the next. Like, you see Luka, you know, Luka Doncic now. And then you Luka, see – Luka, Zion. Uh, it's like crazy, and then and then the um, what's the big kid in Philadelphia? Um, Embiid, 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 Embiid. Yeah. like the Joker, what? Joker too. Joker's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So you know, all those 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 people birth the the new era that's coming in. So like yeah. I said, the, the the technicians are better. The the athletes are better now. The the shooters can shoot better. You know, and um, you know, and they all connected with the phone <laughs> and they can all reach out to each other. Like, let's get, let's get this work in. Let's all, you know, you know, that's the wonderful thing about the rivalry that if you call, if magic called Isaiah and Isaiah wasn't home, they didn't talk to each other. Dominique called Jordan. Jordan wasn't home. They didn't talk to each other. We wasn't in the cell phone era that back then that hadn't popped off until 90. So it wasn't as easy to be buddy, buddy. It wasn't easy to be buddy, buddy. And everybody's checking, uh, taking commercial flights. You know what I'm saying? It's different. Like, oh, I got to look up a flight. Let me get, you know, let me look up a flight. I, matter of fact, you couldn't even look up a flight. We didn't have no internet. You had to call. You had to call. What kind of flights y'all got to Chicago to go see Michael? You know what I'm saying? Dominique, like, what kind of flights y'all got? You know, call a, call a travel agency. Uh, we got this, that, and the other. But now, Cats is making... 40 million a year. Yeah, they can they can spend 10 grand on the flight to Chicago. They can, you know, write it off as a business opportunity to go work out with, you know, Akeem or this, that, and other. They're getting private plans. Yeah. <laughs> so in your third season, you took a huge leap, right? And you became starter for half of the season. What do you feel changed for you in that perspective of that season compared to the first two? Um and just elaborate on that. I figured out the cheat codes. 
Mm. <laughs> you know, to be basically honest with you, I just figured out the cheat codes, man. Uh, we, we, we talked about this before when I was sitting on the bench in high school. I just couldn't figure it out because, you know, it's different from an empty gym. And when that gym has got 20,000, 30,000 people in it with cameras everywhere, and, you know, that's when – can you perform then? Mm. That's the difference, man. That's what makes Michael, Kobe, LeBron, Steph, Katie, all these cats who they are. Everybody's looking at you. What you going to do, LeBron? What you going to do, KD? What you going to do, Magic, Bird, Jordan? What you going to do? Can you do it then? And I figured out, man, it's the same game. It's just more people watching and just go out and get it. So I, I knew what I could do. I knew I was good at. I didn't try to I didn't try to deviate from that. That 93 season, I led the league in field goal percentage. I'm the layup king. And nobody, nobody make layups like me. Has never been heard of. All every everybody who got that award was a seven footer. Do the do the homework. Everybody who got that award was a seven footer. I came in at six seven, best field goal percentage. Like, yo, that's my job doing layups. I let Danny Ainge, I let Marley, y'all shoot them threes. Pick and roll, Kevin Johnson. You shoot them Jays and pull up some mid range. Barkley, take care of them. what I'm gonna do. I'm make these layups, and I'm gonna keep making. You, these but you had a knack, like you was always in the right place at the right time. Like I got to watch a lot of film of you. You feel what I'm saying? You had some stuff you don't even know, like developing touch, right timing, right positioning, knowing how to cut off a guard, like. You, to me, was one of the best players I ever seen. You didn't need to run no play, and I give uh, you a dub. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. because you do your homework. You do your homework. When you know, I know where KJ likes to shoot. I know where Ains likes to shoot. I know, you know, uh, uh, Marley is a hard three-point shooter. It's not a lot of arc on it. It's going to be straight. It's going to hit hard. Oh, Danny Ains going to hit soft. All that other stuff, you figured all that out. Charles Barkley, man, his he got a soft, he's big, bold, but he's got a soft touch. When he misses, it kind of rolls off the rim. And you do your homework before, and you know, man, y'all two played in the league, man. You know, everybody, everybody turns their back. Everybody turns they 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 look. Oh man, Barkley about to do something. Why Barkley about to do something? Say Ed is back here cutting, and you turn. Oh. He done got him another layup. You know what I'm saying? Everybody turns their back. And then it's 82 games. It's a grind. Everybody don't want to run like that. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't want to run like that. At all. My, my biggest compliment every time I got in the game is when somebody said like this, oh, checking in the game, Sabalo. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't I'm stop my, moving. I'm, I'm on my fourth game. In seven days, and I got to chase this motherfucker. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dominique, Dominique said it every time I checked in the game. Like, like I got to chase this dude down. And that's my thing, man. I just kept moving, just kept moving, knowing where I was supposed to be. I didn't have to worry about the J. The J didn't come till later, and even when it did come later, <laughs> uh, I didn't really use that as a big weapon. You know, I didn't use that as a big weapon like that. Well, yeah, friend. you started to average 50 then. You went from 20 with no pl no place. <laughs> First of all, no place. Now you get in place. Yeah, you go score 50. I still ain't get no play. But but like I said, it's it's about being in the right place. Just knowing basketball, <laughs> man, you can score. If you want to score in this league, you can score in this league. Just You, you just yeah. have to figure it out. And I could get yeah. it's It's about where you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, I. This ain't happening in Detroit. I'm not getting 50 in Detroit. Because yeah. ain't nobody ain't nobody giving me no ISOs 30 times to get no 50. You know what I'm saying? Like cats be like, oh, now I got 50. Yeah, but you got 30 ISOs. You're supposed to get 50 with 30 ISOs. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, get, get 50, get 50 without a play. Supposed to get you know 60, actually. 30 ISOs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? you got the ball the whole time. Screaming, I got 50. You got the ball the whole time. Uh-huh. Yeah, don't, don't that's me. what I said. Because, man, <laughs> if I'm knowing I shoot 50 to 60% and I get the ball 30 times? Yeah. 70. Really? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> For real. All right. Being, being training to the lake, 
we don't think we can get a player better than we did with this pick. That's what Jerry West said. We think he's a terrific talent. You, you got traded to the Lakers for a first round pick, giving up 350K that year reportedly. Being the best season of your career, getting that all star nod, dive into that for us, coming back home. Yeah, first, um, I was already at home. <laughs> okay. I had a crib uh, uh, off the beach. So when it happened, I was like, well, at least I ain't got to move. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was the first thing I thought about because I never got traded before and I didn't know how it all went down. I remember, I remember, uh, a little wake up call about the business when I was uh, on that same road trip that I had, uh, didn't have my coat. We played New York the first game, but our, our second to the last game was in New Jersey. And uh, Eddie Johnson, uh, sh- shooter, shooter extraordinaire, uh, commentator now for the Sun, uh, Eddie Johnson got traded. He taped one, he taped one ankle up and they pulled him off the table, the table and was like, yo, you you trade it and I uh, and and I to be honest with you I cried because I was like yo you you and Cotton Fitzsimmons are buddies y'all play golf together y'all hang out together you, you trade your homie like you tra- I, I didn't get it I didn't understand the business like this my rookie year I didn't understand the business like that I was like you know I'm out of here soon like this dude is you know he's a starter you know he get big minutes they trade him like how do you, I thought. When, I thought being traded was a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? I thought you couldn't play. Get your butt out of here. You can't play. Get out of here with trade. And to, uh, you know that moment woke me up, and I was like, man, I'm, let me let me start collecting my practice jerseys because I'm up out of this mug in a minute. You know. And then uh, Kurt Rambis saw the stress on me a couple of games later when the trade deadline was coming around. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was like, man, being traded is not a bad thing. You know, that means somebody else wants you. And it doesn't mean that this team that you're on right now doesn't want you. It's just that their their job is to try to win a championship. And their job is to keep salaries, this, that, and other. So sometimes, he says, like in your, for instance, you, you're, you're, you're under this contract, but in the next contract you get, it's going to be m- big money. Some teams may or may not can afford that. So they, you know, they tra- he was breaking it down to me. And it made me feel a little bit better. Uh, so when I got traded to L.A., uh, the experience was just shocking at first. But then I was excited again to being back at the crib um, right after the press conference. The first thing I do is, uh, uh, you know, I go buy 50 tickets. You know, I get my mom's eight tickets uh, courtside and then I get, you know, the rest for the block. And I made my mom, you know, take care of all everybody, anybody. And my rule was this, man, because, you know, in L.A. is crazy. If you wanted tickets, you had to show up on time. You had to show up while I was in layup line. If you didn't show up when I was in layup line, moms, moms came on in. And when moms came in, she was not coming back out or sending no tickets back out. So if you was here to see said play, you showed up when he was in the layup line. And, uh, uh, and that was just my only rule, man. It was cool playing at home. It was a lot of pressure playing at home. Um, it exposed me to a lot of things uh, that I had never seen <laughs> At home, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just, you know, just living a life, man. And, uh, and you know, it, there, there, there was a good time. There was a good stretch of, you know, a lot of good things going on uh, in L.A., man. L.A. is a, a, a tremendous place to play and uh, and to, to, to be, trust me. <laughs> you did get to do some other cool stuff. And I know we'll talk about it, but it's just like, man, like, how you get in Space Jam like that? Ah. Like, I'm one of the most iconic basketball movies of all time. All time. And you in there. Yeah. And you in there in the form. Front and center. Uh, no, no, no. That was uh, Sports Center. No. LA Sports. We, we filmed it in the oh, Sports now, Oh, yeah, in the Sports <laughs> Arena. But they said sports it was arena. a form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they said it was a form. Yeah. Uh, uh, Nick Van Exel didn't want to do it. They 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 put Nick in there. Nick and, didn't uh, want to do it. Yeah, and Charles Rochlin and uh, what was the other cat's name? Man, he played at UCLA. They called me. It was like, "What you doing?" I said, "Well, I'm, why would I do all, every summer? I'm up on the hill chilling, feet up." It's like, "Yo, it's come be in the movie." Because I was playing, I was playing in uh, 
the Jordan Dome with Jordan yeah. every day. Yeah. Okay. Which if we if y'all want to get into that, oh my God. Uh on the, the Jordan M- Dome. In M- M- Burbank, right? This is Burbank. W B. Yes. Yeah. Burbank. So uh so uh and just going there and playing well. And then when Nick didn't want to do it, they was like said, you know, you want to do it. We need you down here in like, you know, an hour if you can get here. I said, all right, what you need? Said, just bring a suit. You know, I just came down and knocked it out. It was dope. You know, it's, it's you know, you know dope. what's crazy about it is when my kids watch it, I don't tell them I'm in it. Like when they, you know, and then they go, like, hold up. You know, you know Bugs Bunny, like you know Bugs Bunny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you know Bugs Bunny. Like that's that's the best yeah. thing in the world, right there. That's crazy. I mean, that's gonna be an iconic movie yeah. forever. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, not because of Michael. I love Mike. Don't get me twisted, but the fact that Lonely kids, Tunes. Bugs Bunny. Yeah, it's Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's gonna live forever, man. That's gonna live forever. So you know, and and thanks to Warner Brothers, the checks still come in for my little part. I appreciate y'all. You know what I'm saying? Keep them coming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's the biggest thing, though. To watch watch your kids watch a cartoon, and then you pop up in a cartoon, and they go. What the heck? You know what I'm saying? It's priceless. Yeah, it's priceless. it is. Yeah, that's awesome. It was dope. Just jump into that 96, 97 season. Rookie Kobe, Shaq in yeah. LA. What was that shift like? Like, like, what would you feeling in the locker room? You know, you Shaq come in, you got a young Kobe, and you know, like you saying, you already knew about Kobe. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, in that regard, like, with you, the Eddie Jones, like, what was your thought process all before? Well, that? with Kobe, I was like, you know, when once he gets healthy, when when is Dell Harris going to take the shackles off of him? Because Dell is an old school coach, and he's not into rookies. He don't want to play rookies. And, you know, he wants them to go through there, you know, the whole rookie thing, the haze, and he wants them to do that. He's an old school, old head. So, you know, practice watching this kid. I mean, me and Eddie Jones, Nick, are like, like, wow, like the best iconic miss dunk. We're playing five on five, half court. Uh, Travis Knight, yes, in big the corner. Man. He's in the corner. Kobe cuts down the middle. Shaq is not guarding him, uh, Travis. Kobe cuts down the middle. He throws it to Kobe at the dotted. Kobe 360s. Tried to get Shaq 360. We shut practice down. We shut practice down. He tried. I mean, like, like, like he got Shaq, but the fact that Shaq was just big enough and strong enough to move him to where he missed the dunk was like, yo, this, this practice is over with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, old head. The old head said this practice is over with. No, Dale was like, no, no, no. See, that's what I'm talking about. Just lay the ball up and getting on him. You know, like no, no flashy stuff. And yeah. stuff. And I was like, yo, this practice is over with. <laughs> Shut it down. He tried it. He tried it. <laughs> I mean, a good. I, I'm he, he, you trying, young Shaq too. You trying yeah. after you just broke your hand. You trying young Shaq. So you got enough confidence after a broken hand to do a 360 at half court. Now y'all both know playing half court, man. Like yeah. you, might, you might you might get a tip dunk. You might drive and take off yeah, somebody. That's but it. You, come on, you going 360? Oh man, come on, man. Like, and you, so and you it, said it, he caught it at the dotted. So he ain't really got no gathered, probably no dribble. Oh, no my. dribble. Just an <laughs> instant catch and twist and 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 just couldn't get it over Shaq because of the physicality of it. Like, he couldn't move Shaq's body. That's why he couldn't get all the way to the, you know what I'm saying? But we was like, oof. Like, uh, so when we got Shaq, you know, one, you know, I know that's cold. But when we got Shaq, it was kind of like an instant. No disrespect to Vladi, no disrespect to Eldon, but it's, it's Shaquille O'Neal, man. Like, it's Shaquille O'Neal. And we all thought, you know, Penny was dope. But, you know what I'm saying? I know I'm better than Nick Anderson. Uh, you know, I, 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 excuse me. I know I'm better than Dennis Scott. Eddie thought he was better than Nick Anderson. You know what I'm saying? We was like, all right, we we can we can do some things, we right? Can we can do some we things with dude. And um, you know, the biggest thing, you know, and I got traded that year too after I get hurt. But the biggest thing I, I messed up about that is the first, I don't know, 
five games, I'm the leading scorer. Jerry was like, no. <laughs> we pay a dude $120 million. It ain't no way this million-dollar dude going to be our leading scorer all season. Get this cat out of here. That, I, I, I wasn't thinking about the business. Remember I told you all about the business yeah. of the game on why people get traded and this, that, and the other? And I'm like, yeah, you got, you, that was the wrong thing to do. Like, that was the wrong thing to do. Like, I think I was averaging, like, 28, and Shaq was averaging, like, 25 or something like that. And that was the wrong – that was the wrong thing to do. Yeah, but he made it easier for you to get buckets. So how can that – He like... made it crazy easy. But the still, when you paying the dude at that time, unheard of, the biggest contract in the league, $120 million, and you got a dude making a million – Investment. That's the politics right there. Yeah, that's the politics. Pack up the bags. Oh, is this mine? This mine over here? Okay, I'm going to take this. Gonna <laughs> yeah, Get but they, think about this, though. I would still say this. If Robert Ori, which is I, – I still think it's a very iconic trade because if that trade doesn't happen, like, they don't get Robert and they don't get championships. But No, 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 no. I, 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 don't disrespect me like that. I didn't respect <laughs> you. This is what, all I'm saying. If he didn't get mad at Danny Ainge and throw the towel in his face, you think you leaving? No. Well, uh, well, if they were successful, if they were successful, he wouldn't have left. They would have mm-hmm. fired Danny Ainge and kept Robert Ory because Robert got two rings. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that they were terrible, when I got traded, they were one in fourteen. Man. They were one in fourteen. He they made high. the trade. They made the trade for Jason Kidd from Dallas. He broke his collarbone the first game, first half of the game in in uh, Vancouver. He breaks his collarbone. We don't have nobody else that can get buckets because they had Sam Cassell, they had Robert Ory, they had uh, Chucky Booker. They got all that for Barkley. They got all that for Barkley. Oh, yeah, I remember that. did not have a score. So if they were successful with that, then Robert wouldn't have threw the towel. Robert would have stayed. Danny Ainge would have got fired for for Robert throwing the towel. But the fact that they stunk was just one thing. And then uh, Robert was great with a king. He already played with a big center. Uh, uh, I'm an interior guy who's going to take away from Shaq, which I was. Him and Rick Fox are exterior guys. They shoot, they spot up, they shoot good defenders. But I'm saying that doesn't happen unless that team stinks. So now mm-hmm. they're looking for they looking for entertainment and they're looking for points. And they can't get it with that Phoenix team. We ended up, yeah. we ended up in the sixth spot. I took that team from one and fourteen to the sixth spot in the playoff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jason came back uh 10 games after uh I got there, and then we took it to the sixth spot. So it, it, you know, I don't know if we'd have won championships. You know what I'm saying? It might have been a different scenario. You know, Kobe might have been playing a little earlier uh, than he was because you got know, to admit they was terrible. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They they got eliminated. in the beginning. They, yeah, yeah, they, they got eliminated early. They got eliminated. They didn't they didn't win a championship in the form. I think they played two game two years in the form. They were two terrible. Yeah. It wasn't until Kobe yeah. went to another level is when they won championship. When Kobe went to another level, when they opened up the Staples Center in 2000, that's when, you know, oh, my God, like, yeah. and, and, you know, and, I, and, and and if I was to choose, I choose uh, Kobe 8 over Kobe 24 every day. I choose Afro, nappy Afro number 8 over 24 Kobe any day. Kobe didn't have no, he didn't care, he didn't care about his mama. Like, that dude didn't care about nobody, man. He 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 got some sensitivity when he wore number twenty four, but when he didn't care, oh my god! You see what he did to Indiana. You see what he did to Philadelphia. I mean, come on, man, Jersey, come on, man, dude. Yeah, but twenty four did have eighty one. Are you serious right now? Then we just talk about if you got the ball all the time. <laughs> then we Play just talk about throw. that, Craig. Eighty one though. <laughs> let's let's break that film down. Let's break that film down. And then one, the times. Hey, all right. One, ahead. you're not playing for nothing. You're playing against Toronto. Terrible. No, we're you, three. You down, you down a dub. You down a dub. <laughs> you bring him back. I give it to you. Phil should have took him out. 
You bring them back, oh, okay? You know what I'm saying? And then you up a dub. Now you blowing Toronto out. So it's not like it's a close game. You know what I'm saying? Like Cove could have got them many a nights. He could have got 81 many a nights. I still, oh. I, I, and and you don't got nobody on that squad that going, hey, I, hey, give me the ball. I need that ball, man. Okay, Kyle, but Kyle, I got Kyle ain't gonna complain. <laughs> Kyle not gonna complain about not I, getting the ball. I got a different scenario for you now. Uh, nobody. So since we talked about Jordan playing golf, right? Kobe had to do something too, where he had to go to Denver, right, and then come back and play, and then he still gave forty to fifty. First things what first, that, the mental, though? the, yeah, mental, the of, mental of dealing with that. Okay, I give it to Kobe. But the fact that you got your feet up getting a pedicure on a private jet to Denver, Colorado, stop it, Craig. Stop <laughs> what do you mean? Craig, Did he man. come back? Did, you still got to fly? It's the same day. That's like old school. That's like old school NBA day. I travel and play in the same day. Trust me. I know. I played in that era <laughs> where we have to carry. I played in the era where we carried our own shit. And we yeah. had to take the, we had a back to back. We had to take the six o'clock fight. And fly and go play tonight. I, I get it, like I'm saying, but I'm 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 in coach next to the baby and the doctor. <laughs> Kobe is on a private jet getting the pedicure. Like, what part of flying? That ain't flying. That's sleeping. <laughs> oh. Come on, man! Don't try to don't don't it's try still to don't flying. do that. It's still flying. No, man, that's flying. PG, man. He got, he got his feet up. He getting a massage. Come on, man. He got the helicopter on top of the Staples Center. Nobody else can do it. But Kobe. Yeah, that was cold. That's crazy. That, that was cold. That was, that was yeah, killer, that was killer, man. That's killer right there, boy. And then That's for those killer. that, that... I, I, I still take eight. I still take eight over twenty-four. I still take Kobe eight over twenty-four all day because I just thought he didn't. He didn't care about nobody, man. You know what I'm saying? Like he he was forced. Like he got eighty-one, but he was forced to. To, to deviate, feel like, hey, hey, get it down to the big fella. Get it down to the, you know. Yeah. I, didn't, you me, know. me personally, I like Adidas Kobe more better than Nike Kobe. Ooh, he said Adidas yeah. Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> Not the spaceships. Not the yeah. spaceship Kobe. Yeah, because oh, it, uh, it's, it's three Kobe's, <laughs> though. It's Adidas Kobe. Then we got Jordan Kobe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then Transition. Nike Mama Transition. Kobe. Yeah. 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 The, the, the the Adidas Kobe's, I think the Adidas Kobe's dunks were crazy harder. Like he, oh, like May was he so had athletic. something to prove. Every he day, had something yo. to prove. Like oh my god, even his, oh. even his, even his, like his bounce was even more like ah, it was like Thank it was you. Then he started you, to get like he was, he started to get like too relaxed and too smooth with it. That 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 eight. He became he became a technician when he got twenty four. He was technically yeah, proper yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like when he was eight, he was, I mean, his crossover was like, excuse and, me. Ooh, <laughs> yes. And then he came back in the picture like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Kobe was bananas with eight, man. I love eight. I love eight, Kobe, man. For those that don't know, you guys are actually related, right? Yeah, we share the same great grandfather. Um, wow. Huh. And, um, down, down, down the line. When he got when he got drafted at the press conference, I told him about it. And he was like, "Yeah, I know Tony," because Tony was my agent. He said, "Yeah, I know Tony." Yeah, because Tony told me about him when he was when he just got back from overseas. He's mm. like, "Yo, I, we, you got a cousin in Philadelphia that's bananas. Like, wait, he gonna be in there with you? Watch, he gonna be in there with you? Like, like oh, okay." You know, so I had never seen him play, and then until the films and stuff came out, I was like, "Yo, this cat." So when we drafted him, I was like, "Oh, dope! I gotta run down to the form." Me, my peoples, you know what I'm saying? Why did you decide to go overseas? Is what I want us to know. I want to get into that. Uh, I, I, um, you know, first things first, when, when you're done, it's hard. It's, it, it, you know, when I got released from, I got bought out by Denver, I, I fucking came in and, and fell right on the floor and just cried my fucking eyes out. Me and the equipment guy was just like, you know, just consoling me, man, because. I just knew, I just knew, even when I was in Miami, my last full year, that I, I did not want to give nobody 20 no more. 
You know what I mean? Like I could give somebody 20, but I did not want to. Like I was turning down shots. There ain't no way in the world I'm turning down. I don't turn down no layups. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what kind of era we in. If I played in this era when somebody go get a lift, they kick it out to Steph Curry, like, oh, that was a great pass. No, I'm laying it up. So when I didn't want to do that no more, I knew it was coming to a close. And, and you know, and everybody want to have that, you know, that moment, like, you know, the rocking chair and the, and the tour and, you know, everybody, congratulations, standing ovation and that whole thing, like Dirk, Kobe and Magic and, Kareem and Dr. J had everybody want that man, but it, you know it don't it doesn't usually always work out like that. You know, a lot of us end up on the floor crying, you know, and and we go off into the sunset. Uh, I was offered uh, when I got back from uh, Denver, I drove back to Phoenix. Uh, I was offered a position uh, with the Suns from Jerry Colangelo, and and if y'all know Jerry, he's a stand up dude. That job. Is a lifetime job. Once he once he anoints you with that job, you know what I'm saying. It's a lifetime job. You know, uh, the, the Van Arsdales they're still in the organization now. Mark West still in the organization now. You know, Chambers, Jim Kempton they still in the organization. Eddie Johnson they still in the organization now. Uh, so when I got that opportunity, uh, I, I still hadn't seen. I knew I was going into the corporate world, and I hadn't seen the world. So I start signing these four four game contracts overseas. You know, I went to Israel for four games, which was dope. Israel is dope. So you you oh, yeah I don't think you heard me. Israel is dope. Like crazy. You and Mike T played for the same team, Hopperwell Tel Aviv. And yeah. then you know I went to Yerushalayim. And that's the owner where I lived in the crib at Rishon. Oh, so, yeah. Rishon, Rishon had a place that you could, that was the only place you can get chicken wings over there, yo. They had a place inside of a mall. But see, this is a, this, this a disappointing part about it for me. When I went over there, we uh, my, after my fourth game, uh, when I was thinking about, man, I should stay. Like, because they offered <laughs> me a deal, I should stay. The war started. So I was like, I'm, uh, I left all my stuff in the hotel room. I left everything. I left from the game. It. it was a road game. I left from the road game, got on a plane, and left. Left from – and, you know, it's crazy because I, I'm at home, and uh, at that time they would were, they were broadcast NBA TV because there was so many pros over there. They would broadcast NBA yeah. TV overseas game. I'm watching guys with my shoes on playing. Like, so they just divvied up all my stuff in the hotel room. I'm like, oh, you got my – my name is on those shoes right there. Like, oh, man, you got kidding me. It was crazy, yeah. That was dope. Yeah, so they got uh, you. Yeah, I man. got family. I got family in the Philippines, so okay. that's why I took that deal. You know, I brought the fan band with me on that. Uh, uh, that was that was. I mean, that was dope. Uh, now Philippines yeah. is crazy. I played over there I too. Man, I love it. Uh, the yeah. PBA, the PBA. Nice. Woo. You don't have to PBA. touch nothing, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. You do not have to touch nothing. They have somebody for everything you have to do. They give you a driver. They give wow. you a maid. They give yeah. you an assistant. They give you a translator. They yeah. give you somebody, uh, a runner, uh, in practice. You hungry? You hungry? Okay, they run, go get you something to eat and bring it right back. They have a laundry person. I had six people traveling, and security. I had six people traveling with me everywhere I went. It was crazy. You didn't have to lift a finger, man. You did not have That's to lift a bar. Finger. That's a bar. Did not have to. That's and awesome. I, 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 played with, I played over there with a guy named... Uh, uh, Dorian Pena, he's out of D- yeah. DC. Pena, yeah. yeah, he's out of DC, and him and his pops, and uh, him and his pops had a business in DC, and he would ship over uh, throwbacks jerseys, like the jerseys were were like four dollars over there. He was shipping them back to his pops, and pops was slanging them for like you know at that time it was like two three hundred. The throw, when the throwbacks was in, the whole Nelly, yeah. the Nelly era. The, oh my God. The fabulous joint. The show. Yeah, he was killing it. He was killing it with, with the over. It was like four dollars over there. You know. So uh yeah, I had a had a blast there. And then uh Russia. Um, because I knew I, I, I wanted to visit Russia. Uh so I signed another four year four game deal over in Russia. And all of this is uh 
you know, doing, I still got my job in Phoenix. <laughs> I still got my job in Phoenix. I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I signed where the timing was perfect, where they would go on road trips, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and I didn't really have to do much. So it, it was, it was perfect timing for me, man. And, uh, Russia was cold as all outdoors. It was, it was, just, it was an experience. Uh, I was introduced to Tyler Perry movies over there. So, you know, <laughs> you know, I had a blast. So that's, those are the reasons why. I mean, I heard from Dominique. Dominique went to Greece. Dominique was like, yeah, you got to go. Tom Chambers had played for Maccabi Tel Aviv. Um, you know, uh, when I got there, I got the, uh, I stayed at that uh, Hyatt right there on the beach. And, yep. and, uh, and I got to go, I got to go see the Holy Land in Jerusalem. Oh, it can go on and on. The Dead Sea, River Jordan, uh, where the Bibles was found. In this, I mean, on and on and on, man. It was just a, a great time. Um, but like I said, the, the, the war started, man. They t- <laughs> they take me to the catch place that I, I I replaced, the American that I replaced. I forgot his name. But he had a fight with his girlfriend, and the windows was busted out. The whole place was a wreck. I was like, no way. Take me to the nearest hotel. So they took me to that Hyatt. And you know me, you know what I'm saying? I'm a hustler, you know, West LA kind of guy. I went straight to the to the general managers. Like, look here, man, I got a big press conference. And I like these shirts you got in this gift shop. If you take care of my bill here, I wear these shirts every time I'm on television or every time I'm in the paper or whatever, whatever. Yeah. It was like done deal. He came out, brought me like 15 of them shirts, man, that said Hyatt uh, Israel or something on it, man. And all of my pictures, either I'm wearing the jersey in the game, or I'm wearing that <laughs> shirt. <laughs> Getting that, and I got a right. nice, nice little big suite too, man. Internet was free, you know. You know, oh. internet is so important over there. Oh yeah, it's very important. When you over that water, man, yeah. that internet is so important. So, so you was just on the beach with your shirt off every day, huh? After practice. every day, <laughs> every day, you know, say so in between practice. Because see, that's the thing over there. When we got. When I was in Dallas and we got Dirk, and I kept telling it, all the young fellas, like, I even told you, I said, yo, these overseas cats are not playing. Yeah. And I see why. They have to practice twice a day, no matter what. Yeah. I don't care if we played last night and got in at 2 in the morning. We we come into practice two times that day, and, and it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It is what it is. They don't care nothing about that. So I'm like, so when Dirk came over, and they was working Dirk out two or three times. Like, this was Dirk. Dirk would foul twice. His, his first two years, when we played against Carl Malone, big-time forwards, he would yeah. foul twice and sit the first half to watch and, and learn wow. and try to figure yeah. out. And not only that, to rest, because Kiki Vandeweghe worked him out in the morning. Uh, little Donnie Nelson worked him out. And then his, his, uh, his trainer, Ogre, Worked him out right. Before. I mean, he had three workouts before we played Carl Malone. Like, he ain't got no legs. He can't play Carl Malone, Hall of Famer, all second all time leading scorer without no legs. So he fouled two times. Beep, beep. 41 41. He comes sit down and he rests and he watch and he pay attention. But that's what I was like telling all the young guys, man. Yo, these overseas cats are not playing. They don't, one, they don't have no posse. Two, Ain't got to worry about no braids and no dress code. Three, ain't got, ain't ain't not one overseas cat had an argument with a coach or a disagreement with his contract. Not one. Name me one overseas player that had contract dispute or had beef with his coach. Not one. So I'm saying, so they taking our, they taking our jobs because of the way they discipline, the way they're, they're trained to do over there. And they, they work constantly and don't even care. Yes, some of them smell funny. That's all right. Yeah, you know, but they work constantly and don't have a problem. They don't have a problem working. Like, they've been professional since they was like 13 years old. Since they was 13. Every team yeah, that they've I been playing on, pro. Was a yeah. 13, 14 year old on that team. Yeah, for sure. And I'm like, you are th- when I was in Russia, I'm like, you 13? Like, you don't go to school? He was like, no. I was no, like, well, what do who? you do? He's like, I do what you do. I'm like, at 13? Oh, at 13. Uh, yeah, crazy. and we over here tripping. So 13. I'm trying to get flipped for Hollywood on on my t-shirt at 13 <laughs> years old. And this dude making chippers. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I'm trying to check yeah. into Fairfax. And he told yeah. me to, you know, get paper, man. Get paper. <laughs> Crazy <clears throat> part. All right. All right, we running into the last few questions. And uh, this one is, is called Rhino Vision. 
Um, and since you played in the golden era, right? I want you in detail. I want you to walk us through one of your favorite plays against one of the league's best, being Magic, Jordan, Larry, Kobe, et cetera. In the detail of the play, like, how did it come out? Did you come out of a timeout? Was it baseline inbounds? Was it sideline inbounds? Was you at the bottom? You had the uh, zipper screen up, catch the ball? Like, what in detail? Just to give the viewers a different perspective of um, the offense that is ran, and it, especially in the golden era age time, you know what I'm saying, that okay. you were in. So right. uh, It's got to be my rookie year. Uh, in Chicago, first time playing Jordan. Like I said, I checked in the game, went straight up to him. I know him, Mr. Jordan. Woo, woo, woo. He said, Cal State football. Get on out of here, said, man. You tripping, man. Woo, woo, woo. Once up and down the court, second up and down the court, we fast break it. They gave it to your boy. I took off the furthest I ever taken off. Scotty on my back, Mike on my front, smashed on him. Ooh. Boom. Got to be. I got a picture of it too. It's mad blurry because we had HD back then. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> smashing, smashing on Mike and Scotty, my rookie year, at, on, on the break. So that that you know, welcome to would the you, league, young fella. Would you wide? Would you wide on the wing or would you run it down the middle? No, I was wide, but then the ball, you know, it was a two. It was me and Marley, and I was ahead of Marley, uh, so he kicked it to me, and then I just kind of cut to the middle, you know, do my left hand thing. You know what I'm saying? People aren't expected. Didn't know about the lefty. They ain't know about my lefty. <laughs> like, it's like my left hand, uh, I eat with my left hand. I play golf. I bat yeah. with my left hand, but I write with my right hand. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a stupid. I'm, I'm a stupid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I don't know why, but uh, I, my left hand is a beast. And at that time, nobody really knows me my rookie year. So I, I took off with my left on the right side. And, and, and caught him off guard. I'm like, ooh, ooh, we. Dan, Dan Marley is my favorite player to play in NBA Jam with. Oh, yeah. I was a oh, love yeah. player with Dan it. Marley, dog. He, like, uh, fire out the game. Yeah, he could shoot it and he dunked really hard. So it was the best best of both worlds. Yeah, Dan, he, he pretty tall, right? About 6'5? Yeah, no, no, he's 6'6. Six, six, he up there. He's 6'6? Six, six? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, but he could, he could, in that game, he he had some crazy dunks and he could shoot the ball long. You know, he had long range. So. All right, we got the give a dog a bone segment. It's going to be a bunch of rapid fire questions just for our audience yep. to know you a little bit better. Starting with this is the Underdogs podcast. We got to know what your favorite dog breed is. Rottweiler. Hey. That's becoming a common answer, guys. I don't know if you've noticed that. We've gotten a lot of Rottweiler answers. Yeah. 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 Red you, know, uh, you know, you know Elijah. Craig yep. Elijah, man. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was yeah, 17 when he passed, man. He was 17 when he passed. Yeah. Crying like a baby, man. So I got a little Cali. Cali running around here somewhere now. He a little Yorkie, but, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't do the big dog thing no more, man. It's too much emotion behind it. Gotcha. Favorite musical artist? The King, man, Michael Jackson. All right. And those, we, we had to pass over it because of time, but. You yourself are a musical artist. We want us to know what the favorite song you released was. Um, probably be Yes Y'all. Okay. Um, and I didn't. I never released it, but I, you know, I had the whole album. The reason I didn't release the album it was, it was kind of gully, and uh, you know, uh, David really? Stern had got on Allen Iverson about his his album, and so I was like, if he, if David Stern is getting on Allen Iverson, I. I know he's going to rip me a new asshole, <laughs> so I, I didn't even release it. Okay. Favorite shoe? The Air Train. The Air Train. Michael Cooper used to wear it. Um, you got you to gotta Google it. You, you got to Google it. The Air Train. It's, it's, it's almost like a shell toe Nike. Uh, it's almost like a shell toe, but it's got a little mesh on it. It's called the Air Train. That, that's probably my favorite. Okay. I'm about to ask if you got a pair. So we got to ask if Michael Cooper still got a pair. Uh, he air trains? Yeah, they call it Air Train. Yeah. Okay. Um, who is your role model in life and in basketball? Oh, uh, man, life got to be moms, man. What moms go through for me, I salute that every time, man. You know what I'm saying? Me and my knucklehead brother, you know what I'm saying, dealing with us where we grew up and, 
you know, us both getting out, doing what we were supposed to do, grad college graduates, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got to give it, give that to mom. Basketball wise, I got to go to the room next door to be, man. My brother, man, that's the reason I started playing this game. I wanted to be like, I still strive to be like him. Um, just, just his presence on the court. He, he played both ends, super intelligent. Uh, and the fact that the dude is 9, 10, 11 years old getting 50 points in a league game with eight minute quarters is running clock is just bananas. Like, I, you know, I, I still to this day, like, I, I still don't know how he used to do that. Okay. Aside from the team, so not specifically to the team, but what was your favorite city to play in? LA. Uh, not, I mean, not not really because I, that's where I'm from, but L.A. was it was only one place that we ran out the tunnel and got booed. And that's Boston. Everywhere else we ran out that tunnel. I was like, what the heck? Like, y'all cheering for us It's more it's more purple and gold in here than it is New York. It's like it's crazy. It's, it's a different when you plan for squads like that, like the Cowboys, the Yankees, the Lakers. Yeah, it's, it's different. It's, it's, it's different, man, going on the road and you, and you at home. You know what I'm saying? I'm in Minnesota at home. It's it's you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You go to yeah. Denver and you're at home in Denver. It's like, yo, like the rivalry, the rivalry of Lakers and Sacramento didn't start until, you know, the whole Kyle Bell, Phil Jackson era started. But you go up in Sacramento, Golden State, Clippers, you go into any California squad, it'd be more Lakers fans in there than in the, than the home team. Uh-oh. All right. So if you had to separate your career years, so you have your L.A. years, your Phoenix years, if you can only choose one of those to be your entire career, which one are you picking? Oh. Yeah. I got a Phoenix, the Phoenix, just just a possibility of winning the championship in the finals. Um, you know, it's a lot of players that come in and out of this league that become all-stars, like score 50. Well, not a lot of score 50, but the fact that they – you know, coming in out of this league, that all all that individual stuff came with LA. Obviously, the praise and the notoriety came with it. But if I, you know, being so close to winning a championship, man, like, you know, like look at this right here. Like, when I, I worked for Dallas for five years as a vice president, and they gave me this commemorative ring. You know, wow. saying to motivate me to win another champion. I mean, come on, man. Like That's these awesome. are just paperweights. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like these are these are just these are paperweights to me, man. I don't want I don't want no fake ones. I want a real one, man. Like that. So that that ninety three team was uh, I, if I can go back and you know, I, I would have took the Novocaine shot in my foot to try to win that. You know what I'm saying? So I would I would have took the Nova because you know, look at the numbers, man. I gave Pip in the business. Wow. Every time I average twenty five plus on Scott. And that's a good matchup uh, for yeah. That's a good matchup. That's kind of even fade on the low. Yeah, fade. That's a definite. That's a fade. Yeah. That's a fade. Yeah. I want the fade. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'd have got you know it's it's uh you know like I'm, I'm in uh, my Arizona house right now, uh like I, I'm I'm I forever have a meal. You know what I'm saying? Like I go out to eat and cats be like, "Yo, the violence, what's up? This one's on me. I got this." Like, you the mayor, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like that's you know, big fish in a little pond in LA. You know, I'm recognized for what I did for that work, but the fact that you could just you know this town is just and now you know they're trying to get they did went back to the finals it's last bad. year, but it's just still mm-hmm. not the same. You know what I mean? It's still not the same. It's just that era was just crazy, man. Yeah. That the whole town was shut down. Like you go to a gas station, couldn't get gas because the dude was watching the game. He's like, yo, man, take whatever you want, man, because I'm watching this game right now. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. All right. What is your favorite dunk that you were able to pull off? Uh, uh, off the leg windmill. Okay. Off Who the is... leg windmill. I was the first one to do that. Off the same <laughs> LeBron, leg, right? LeBron, LeBron, take it to another level. The off the, off the, off the run, one leg windmill, off the run. Yeah. In the Utah dunk contest, look it up. That's awesome. Who is your favorite dunker of all time, aside from yourself? Uh, Joey Johnson, Carson High School. Okay. Mm. Joey Johnson, Carson High School. Dennis Johnson's little brother. Uh, he was. Uh, I was on the junior team of him. Well, he was with the Watts Magicians. Uh, he had a bird dunk uh, that was crazy from the free throw line, vertical. Vertical from the free throw line. Well, hold on. Oh, sh- sh- let me repeat that. Vertical. Vertical from the free throw line. 
and he would stick his chest out and hold the ball like like vertical. Nah, two bro, feet. I, I almost walked off. You said vertical what? from the free throw line? What? Vertical from the free throw no, line. Yeah. Vertical. I mean, he would he would he would run and then okay. take off two two feet vertical. Two feet. And hold it up. It's called the bird. He have his he have his wings like this, like the bird. He had a ball right here, bird. It's like he's waiting in the air, and then he'll dunk the basketball. Oh, craziest too. thing I've ever seen. The craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, you know. And I saw that live. I saw a tape of uh, jumping Joe Caldwell. He was in the league for a little bit. He uh, ASU uh, ASU alumni. Great. Uh, he is uh, the god uh, the the grandfather of. Uh, he got drafted by Sacramento. Went to Duke. Uh, she's in Detroit now. Bagley. Bagley, Bagley, Marvin Bagley's grandfather. Marvin Bagley. Vertical, free throw line. Show me the film. I was like, "This is unbelievable, bro!" Like, how is that possible? Oh, wow. Two feet. Two I never feet. even heard of it. I never even heard of it. <laughs> I never even heard of it. Like, I never even heard Crazy. of it. <laughs> Crazy. Oh my right. god, that's not even imaginable. Yeah, right? man. You know, everybody um, got those people, the goat man and goat that can take stuff off the oh, top. Yeah, it yeah, is. We all, you know. You know, but you know, yeah, Dennis Johnson, little brother Joey Johnson, That's vertical from the free throw line. Not to flex, but I can touch the net. So, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, net, what would the you net. Say? com, the internet. You can touch the internet. <laughs> internet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aside from basketball, what would you say your favorite hobby is? DJ music. Yeah, DJ has to be. love that. Who is the hardest player you ever had to guard? Scotty. Mm. Oh my God. Scotty can guard everybody from the point guard to the center. Yeah, Scotty. He had range. He had he could he had bunnies. He could take off. He, you know, he, he had the floater. He had the jumper. I mean, Scotty just had the full package, man. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't a killer like Mike was, but man, he Scotty could go, man. Scotty mm. was a problem. Scotty was a problem. Who would you say the best defender versus you was? Scotty. Yeah. Scotty. It's a toss up between Scotty and uh, Look, Scotty Alton. and Scotty. Scotty and Stacey. who? Stacy Altman. Okay. Yeah. You know. yeah. I mean, I got 25, 40 on both of them, but, you know, still. It was hard to do. It was still yeah. hard to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> them yeah. cats, man, don't play. When they, when they get, when they get, whew, and Stacy Arms are like here to New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? So, real, real tough. Okay. What would you say your least favorite city or stadium was to play in? Man, I, I, didn't, I didn't have one. Uh, Vancouver was bananas. Toronto was bananas. Uh, Milwaukee. <laughs> Milwaukee <laughs> might have been. Might have been. And that mall, that mall connected to the hotel was dope. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, it's it's tough. Yeah, Depend on when, you, and then it depends on when you got there. You know what I'm saying? Just like Minnesota, they all had hotels connected to malls that you could walk to, and then have to be outside. But if you got there, it's because it's cold as hell outside. Yeah, <laughs> that's, what I'm that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So you know, it, that's the <laughs> only reason because of when you got there, it was cold, and those two of my, you know, just because it was cold. That was it. They probably dope during the summer or during the spring, but I never, I never been in either one of those places. Wait, so I, you never hung out in Minneapolis? No, I didn't say I didn't hang out. I just said it was freezing. Oh, so I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. well, we got to be out. We, we got to go, bro. No, no, no. I, I, no. I still, I still went to Grand Slam. I still went no, to Lake Minnetonka. To oh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that too, yeah. I still you're win. You're yourself I, in the water. I'm just saying, you got to be like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> See, that's, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what, that's that Craig generation to never invite the OG out. You know what I'm saying. All this. That's, that's a lie. Oh, wait, hold that's up. a lie. Are, are, are we done with the quick questions yet? Because I want to get into this no, young no, man. No, 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 no. Keep it. going on. The, keep going, uh, Jay, on the questions. Man, right, so got, I get we, to this young. We have four more. What is your favorite okay. movie? Sandlot. Sandlot. What's something Sandlot. you wish fans knew or understood better? About. Take it how you want. It could be about you. It could be about the game. Kind of let you. Um, I, yeah, I wish they understood uh, the, the sacrifices that the, the players make. 
Uh, I wish they understood the the, the the inner story that that this is you know uh, you know they they get on us like right now fans are really acting really stupid towards players and their families and um, I wish they understood the grind uh, that we have to go through to get where it's not it's not an easy road you know everybody don't get the Steph Curry role you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. that, you know you know fun, son of a pro and you know and you just become an unbelievable player yourself it ain't always Roses like that, you know. He work hard. He grinds, but oh. uh, you know, I, you know what. This is one thing, and I, I know these are quick questions. I don't mean to elaborate on this. This is one thing, and I and, and my kids get eaten alive about because this is one thing my elementary and junior high school coaches preached all the time. Did you see what their parents drove up in? Did you see they all got the same shoes on, the socks, the sweats, the shirt? The shorts, when I got Mitch Mac shorts on, my top, my jersey don't match. My, I got one of my numbers falling off. Uh, I got a hole in my shoe. My socks is dirty because, you know, they dirty. I had to rewear them. Hole in the and sock. and no he hole. would say to us, <laughs> they they going home to eat lobster and filet mignon. And at that time, I didn't know what filet mignon was. And we going home and eating top ramen and beans and oodles and noodles. And, and, and so... Our beans are going to taste a lot better with a win, and their their filet mignon and lobster is going to taste a lot worse with a loss. So that that was taught to me at a small age that I cannot let somebody that's doing better than me come and take something from me on the basketball court. That's the only way I have an advantage. So I wish people understood that more on what we go through. Awesome. Yeah, I love asking that question because that's something like me as a fan. I never played in the league, obviously, but that's not something I fully understood until I know I started developing a relationship with. Mike and Craig and these other guys, it's like, there's so much more that goes into it. Like, I think, you know, pro athletes are idolized by kids at a young age. So they grow up thinking that these people aren't human. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, you guys are. So I think that's something that, you know, needs to be taken into consideration. Um, who is your favorite current player? LeBron. Favorite all time player? The cat. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I think he's the GOAT. Awesome. And the reason I think he's the GOAT is because uh, uh, he's an all-time leading scorer. And not only is he an all-time leading scorer, he doesn't have the basketball to go coast-to-coast and, and ISO. Or he shoot threes. A, or shoot threes or go off the dribble and take you to the rack. That's not, you know what I'm saying? Secondly, he's got a, a shot that's unstoppable. And thirdly, name me another player who they took something out of the game for. I'll wait. They didn't take nothing out of the game for Jordan. They didn't take nothing out of the game for Shaquille. They took dunking out of the game because of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You cannot dunk. It's not fair playing against Kareem if he gets the dunk. Only chance that we have is you take the dunk away. That's crazy. Yeah, that's sick. So who, who's the GOAT? That's in my book, he, he's always going to be the GOAT to me. And he was the first person to have a $100 sneaker. The first top 10 Adidas. He was the first one, $110. And my mom thought I was effing crazy. If you thought that I was going to buy you a $110 pair of sneakers, who do you think you are? For <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think you, you think you are? You thought I was going to buy you $110. And they were $110 at Big Five. No telling what they were at Foot Locker or yeah. you know something. They yeah. were 110 at Big Five, so plus tax, plus tis that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sick. That was the last rapid fire one. So now you can go in on. Okay, Craig. yeah, good. Because I'm gonna get on Craig. Yeah, you ain't, you owe some dudes, bro. Yo, dudes, I, bro. There, there's more. First oh of all, God. you not even gonna bring up the time we went to Ladue. You are not even gonna bring up the time we went to Ladue. Are you kidding me right now? Are you all and, the stuff I like? All the and, stuff I take no, care no, of you. No, 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 no. Every time I take care of you, listen, listen, y'all. This is what I'm saying. The dude he went back. I got what in the store I got for him. He don't even first know that. First. He just woke up. Go ahead and talk. Snacks ahead for this yes, story. yes, yes. First things first. The dude's about to go back east to go to school. He had the same thing that I did when I went to New York City. He had no coat. He had. He wasn't ready for the for the East Coast weather. What I do? I take care of him. He got like two or three Sherlins from. 
from uh from from Farouk. And, and Sherlin's cost like four five hundred a piece. Like he, he yo he went back he went back east right. And every Who's time slags? I see him, yeah, take care of him. I took care of him every time. He go pocket chain. He go all anything he wanted. And then. Yeah, this is a private combo that they forgot we were recording, so we're gonna fast forward through this. Okay. I had I, I was I could not find some 15s and you gave me some some black and red twelves. No, and I gave you the red fives. Those were the, the fives. Red the, fives. the fives that came out, the all red fives with the suede. I gave you those brand new. No, you no, you did not. Yes, I you did. did. You gave me because I was the only one that had them, bro. You no, it was the fives. Was black and it was the, I played in the yes, two league. but the other ones was the fives. You got all no. red shoes. You got no, all bro. red no. shoes. No, the only time you took care of me is that time on them, on them twelve. Oh, and you wanted they was in your back. They was in your back back closet. You didn't even want them, Jones. I said, bro, you know any shoe you can have in there, any shoe. In the in the other other room, not in his room. In the other, in the other, <laughs> other room, you know what I'm saying? He got the spot up in Beverly Hills. I got to go to oh the other other room. God, I can't go to his bro. his stash. I got to go to the other other room. Yeah, this is a private combo that they forgot we were recording. So we're gonna fast forward through this. Okay. Jay, Mike, you listening to this right now? Yeah, Are y'all was, yeah, this? they got it. They got it. They go here. They're my bro. Let us, let us, let us know. See if he don't come through. Let me know. I'm a, hey. I'm a let, I'm a, yeah. I'm a, I'm All right. A, let's, let's move on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I could listen to that for hours. Out. That was hysterical. Oh, yeah. yeah that, was, that was funny. Y'all, y'all, they was going to keep on going if we let them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. So the, so the next segment is we got, we just got a few more uh, questions for you and then we, we done. So the you next segment is. Is is uh Mike's mental minute, and um, I kind of want to talk about just the the mindset and the mentality of you know fighting through the adversities. You know what I'm saying? Of mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just every level that you've been through, and I, I notice you know what I'm saying. You always saying like this this not my design, and you keep on pointing up, and then the God yeah. warning. There's no typo. Kind of want you to just you know just dive into that. Yeah, my, my, my whole mentality was this, man. I my, my mom said this about me too in an interview, and I, I just it, it opened my eyes and shocked me. She said, if if he if if he tried to do something, he did it to the fullest, whether he failed or not. Mm. He, he he was satisfied with his effort that that he tried, uh, regardless of what that was. Uh, I, you know, I, I grew up dyslexic, uh, and I may or may not still be dyslexic. Uh, but I, I, I have trained my mind to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as a kid, being diagnosed with that, I, I in elementary school, they would tell you to go to the special class, right? So my first week was like, you know, that's embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? I got embarrassed because they, you know, Sadger, get up and go to your special class. I'm like, God, can I just go straight there? Why do I have to go here first? And then you call me out in front of everybody and go to the room. So when I got to my special class, uh, I, you know, I, my head was down. I, I wasn't motivated to do nothing. And a lady was trying to teach me, but I wasn't, you know, my mind was somewhere else, man. I was embarrassed. Yeah. Another gentleman said, let me get a crack at him. And he came over to me and said, look, man, you do your work Monday through Thursday and I'll go play basketball with you on the court uh, on Friday. Well, okay. So again, dude, he, yeah. he was sent to me. He was sent to me <laughs> to help me get through my dyslexia, but also teach me this craft. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting choked up right now remembering it because I remember how much he was. And again, I, at that time, I don't know who this man is. He, it was His name was Stan Wicks, and he was Sidney Wicks's brother. And I didn't know Sidney Wicks at the time. I didn't know he was his, even his brother. Sidney Wicks, Hall of Famer, UCLA, Dominic, played in the league, all that. Look him up. Uh, but he sent me that. So I, so my mentality is this, Mike, when, when you ask me about that, is, is you give your best effort. You know what I'm saying? Let the talent come through, crack the door and let God in and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? And just see what happens. You know, even though I was terrible on that bench in high school, 
I didn't sit at the end of the bench. I still was trying to learn this game. And then he allowed it to catch up to me. Uh, so whatever it is, man, whether it's music, life, whatever, give it your full effort. That's my mentality. Give it my full effort and then, you know, let the chips fall where they may. If this is where I'm supposed to be, then great. But I'm, I'm not going to be somewhere and not be prepared. Not going to be somewhere and not give my effort. I, I appreciate you for even cracking and going into that because, you know, mental health is something, you know what I'm saying, in our community that, you know, just beginning to come to light. You know what I'm saying? And just diving deep into the dyslexic is, 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 is so many of us like deal with autism and dyslexia and some of these things that we don't even know that we have. We just had to deal with them. You know what I'm saying? And just treat it just like it was just a normal, a normal thing. Yes. So again, bro, like you the true definition of an underdog. And man, I just want to say we appreciate you and glad for having you on, bro. Good luck. Appreciate that, though. This is the Underdogs Podcast, and I want to know your most funniest NBA moment. <laughs> oh, my God. There's so many. God, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's, you ain't got you ain't got to give me the G seventeen classifieds. Yeah, I, no. that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. I, but I don't, I know Big Shaq gonna be like, man, I can't believe you said that, man. Like, I can't believe that, man. You know, uh, uh, jeez, man. Uh, I, 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 I can't. None of them. None of them are are are. G rated, man. <laughs> None of them are G rated, bro. Yo, so this I, is the first time I don't even have a funny moment. Why? Wow, really None of them are G rated, to be the honest. The whole podcast ran a funny crazy. moment so far. If we're yeah, being real. Yeah, I, I cannot. I cannot. If I say, if I say that what happened, it, it puts that person in a bad light. All you right. know what I'm saying? What like about it, a coach or something? Or could you blank out the name, just coach. say like the story and not who? It ain't even got a, yeah, just say a person. Name. It could just be the same. Nah, because they nah, because then they gonna know. Is, they gonna know. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Hey, Mike, Craig, me and you together, we gonna like you said, <laughs> right? G G four seventeen classified man. Only we can G4 know about that. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, that's our first G seventeen classified. Thanks for that. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, all we'll right, wrap yeah, up. Yeah. We'll wrap up the podcast as we do every episode. We got to know what is the biggest lesson you've learned throughout your entire journey so far. Um, you never know until you know, and I say that meaning that until you get, get your, I'm talking about the league, until you get your butt in the league, you will never know. You will never know the experience of somebody dumping all brand Jordan stuff on the floor and like, here, you can have it. You will never know the experience of hanging out with Magic Johnson and, you know, the Halle Berry comes through, Jamie Foxx comes through, and you, you know, you will never understand watching the movie Sandlot sitting next to Michael Jackson. You, until you get in the league, <laughs> That's great. you will never, know, being at the All-Star game, in Orlando for Michael Jordan's 50th birthday party. And it's Michael, Kobe, LeBron, uh, 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 Carmelo, uh, Bill Russell, Barkley. Uh, and, you're, and you're going, why am I in this circle right now? What is, this is mind blowing. And, and, and then, you know, you, you just, you will never know until you know, I, we can, Jay, we can, we can talk these talks and give you these stories all day. But in, you know, until you fall in love with some of them practice jerseys, man, you'll never, you never know. Getting on airplanes with, you know, top food, you know what I'm saying? I mean, standard play. I mean, I could go on and on, man. You just don't know until you get in there and you're just like, this is unbelievable, man. This is unbelievable. So, you know, that that's the biggest thing I learned, man. And to No matter what my dreams were of being in the NBA, they, even though they were minute, once I got here, I was like, golly. And, and and it just keeps going. Like I said, the Space Jam check comes in. Like, it just, like, you, my desk is full of checks I even cash yet that just keep coming in, man. You from, said it from, don't stop. It, it don't does. stop. It don't. And I try to tell my kids all the time, like, yo, I'm, 
I'm still reaping the benefits from the work I put in when I was 15, 16, 17 years old. Yeah. It, it don't stop. Like, it's just, you know, I love, we talked about the money. I love the fact that they're getting all that money because more endorsement and more licenses means I get more licenses. Like, it's why is this thing continuously going? It's, it's just the greatest, man. So you don't know until you know. You know, any kid out there that dreaming, go for it. It's, it's worth it. Awesome. That's going to do it for this episode of the Underdogs podcast. Special shout out, Cedric Savalos, for coming on, blessing us with your story. Crazy Thanks story, man. Just absolutely insane. So really appreciate that. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace.